Python on their computers. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem Sorry. with that. And using Idle. Anybody using JGRASS? Okay, yeah. it's up to you. Um, with JGRASS, there can be problem with, um, especially on the Windows PC, running graphics. On mm -hmm. Mac, I've been told that there's less problem with graphics in JGRASS. But it's your choice. Um, which I've actually, been playing, I've actually been playing with Eclipse, actually. Eclipse? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because Eclipse does have a way of doing Python. Um, so I guess all this is old news to you. How to print Hello World. Um, how to create a new window and then save a file and then run it. Um, let's talk a little bit about operators. There are different types of operators. So what do operators do? As their name suggests, they operate. They operate on, what else? Operands. Mm -hmm. okay. And what are operands? Operands can be numbers. They can be characters. They can be a whole string of characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, uh, how many operators do you see here? And how many operands? Three, Three operands and two operators. So um, typically, an operator is a binary operator in the sense that it works on two operands, like the plus sign, the addition operator, has two operands on either side, and it adds them. Okay. Some operators are unary operators, like minus five. Mm -hmm. it's that minus, its work is to negate the value of five. And it requires just one operand. But typically, an operator is a binary operator. That means it takes two. Here, binary, in that sense, that it takes two operators, uh, operands. You can actually use the addition operator not just to add numbers, but to add characters and strings as well. So um, that's. Did you get yours working, Amy? Just how? Did you get yours working? Did I get my computer? Yeah, no. Quite fine on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you get the and because, yeah. like I said, Python is interpreted, so I can type in one line and I can r run it. Um, um, run that line right away. What did you just type in? OK. I don't have to write a complete program. What was it? You just typed in the print thing? Yes. I just typed in print ha plus ha to get, I mean, two strings, ha, ha. Okay. Same string added together gives me gave me one string. Oh, that I didn't know you could do that. Now, here is something. Um, what do you expect? Seventy-seven. Yeah. Seventy-seven. Oh, yeah. How many? Okay, let's see. No, it'll be 14. What was it? It'll be 14. It's a print statement yeah. with oh. parentheses and inside is 7. You see, um, oh, okay. Thanks. Okay, mm -hmm. let me do this. You can figure out numbers? Yeah. And now we've heard another print statement with the 7 plus 7, but now they have quotation marks around the 7s. Okay. Instead of but this 77 together. is not mm -hmm. number 77. It's yeah. character 7 followed by the same character 7. It's not the value 77. Oh, Even though oh. it doesn't have the quotes around it. So there's a big difference between the two. Now print, we keep talking about the print command. 
that what print really is is known as a function. Now a function is just a, a few lines of code with a name. So print um, has, a, has quite a few lines of code to do the printing and that group of code has the name print. Okay, so um, <coughs> so there is a program print on that. With lines of code. And we are calling this um, print. We are actually running that function. So this is a this is a function. Uh -huh. This whole thing in Python is called a function. There is another name for it. A method. Okay. So the print function is pretty smart, as you can see here. When it saw that number seven, it realized that this is not a string that I should be printing out as is. It's a value. So it converted that value into the character representation, which is the character seven. And it did the same with the second seven. It found out that it's a value, it's a number, not a string, not a character. Converted it into a character. Um, I'm sorry, um, what am I saying? So it found it a value and the plus sign, and it immediately realized that these are numerical values and there is an operation involved here. And it interpreted those two as such and added them to give us the value 14 rather than writing 7-7. Seven, seven. Is that uh, idle doing that? Or is that the what your input, like, like in the book it tells you like evaluate then in quotations 3.45 or something like that? Or evaluate 7 plus 7. You don't have to do that in idle? No, it's not idle doing it. It's, it's actually the, the Python. Okay. okay. Python code okay. doing it. Yeah. Idle is just letting us type in these lines of code mm -hmm. and then calling the interpreter when we hit the enter it's calling the interpreter to take this line and do its work ah. let it run. Okay. now we are pretty much familiar with operators like addition subtraction Multiplication, although the symbol for multiplication is a little bit different. Instead of the cross, we have the asterisk. Yeah. The division is a slash, but there are two types of divisions. Okay, let's talk about that. As all our lives, we've known a division as just a division. Sometimes, um, one number goes into another number an exact number of times. There are no remainders. Sometimes they don't, then we get a remainder or fractional value. But in Python, um, if you do this, um, this is more like the division we've known all our lives. So the result of this would be um, this would result in 2.5. Okay. But there is another division which is known as uh, this is called the integer division. which does the division, but as a result, it delivers just the quotient, not the remainder or the fractional part. It throws away the, the fractional part. Okay? So we it, get... It, trunca uh, it truncates it, basically. Uh, yes. Yeah. So we, we get a, an integer or a whole number. That's why it's called an integer, because it gives us a whole number. So that's the integer division, that's new. Uh, this is new, the exponentiation. 
or raising to some power. So this is 3 squared. So take note of that. 3. Um, 2 is same as 3 to the power um, 2. Second power of 3. Okay. And another operator that's new is called the modulus or remainder operator. So it kind of complements uh, this integer division operator. Hmm. It does the division, and then it returns just the remainder. Okay. Um, but not as a, as a fraction. Okay. So five remainder operator two, or five modulus two, will give us one. So just like doing, uh, I've been teaching this to my uh, nine-year-old daughter these days, doing division, <laughs> okay? So you get the remainder return. It won't return 0.5, it will just, just return the, the actual remainder. It won't insert your decimal point? No. So, uh, 7 divided by 2 will also return, uh, so not divided, but less. <laughs> uh, 2 will give us 1. So, what do you think the values you will you will get out of these two expressions? First one, sixteen. Second one, second one. Also sixteen. Second one. First one will be eleven. First one will be eleven. Why? Multiplication first. Right. When you have a number of different operators in the same expression, which one do you evaluate first? There is a there is a rule that we have to follow. And according to that rule, just as you said, multiplication before addition subtraction. In fact, division, multiplication, exponentiation come before addition subtraction. So if you want to uh, make an exception of that rule, like you really want to do the addition first and not the multiplication, you put them in parentheses to indicate, to tell the interpreter that I want this evaluated first and then do the multiplication. Here we go. This line, this line will give us a syntax error because of this space. Okay. It's very hard to sort of notice. Accidentally, you may have hit that space bar and inserted one space. When we write programs, we usually and this is strongly encouraged. In fact, you will lose points if you don't do it. You should describe what this program is about. Oh, Who yeah. wrote this program, when this program was written. It's standard practice, all programmers do it. So okay. include a summary at the beginning of the program to explain all these things. And you use a number symbol to put comments, right? Uh, yeah, the, the number symbol or the pound sign. Mm -hmm. So. Now, how would you separate a comment into separate, like, if you wanted to put it in a separate line, will, will it, uh, will it, a downward sign if you put, like, 
Or would you have to do another number sign on the second line of there if you're trying to continue? Yeah, if you have multi-line comments, then you have to, if you're using the number sign, you will have to put one number sign at the beginning of every, but maybe you have, you're going to say what I was about to say. No, it's a different sign. Yeah. Um, how does Python handle sitting all the things? Did it ignore them or did you not use them? You don't, you don't need them. But you don't need what? So you're used to using them. Yeah, I think it will accept it. Yeah. But yeah. Python in this regard is more forgiving than Java. If you don't have the semicolon in Java, it won't, it'll never comply. Okay, back to the point. If you have multiple line comments, then you have to start every line like this. Or you can put three single quotes. And then you can happily keep typing and you can end your comment by putting another set of three quotes, single quotes. So that's wait, another way. Wait, what do you mean put apostrophe, apostrophe, apostrophe? Apostrophe, 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 yeah. What does that mean? Does that mean, mean? Is that uh, like it tells the yes. it tells the compiler or the interpreter that what follows after this this um, these three apostrophes is a comment. And so the compiler or interpreter will ignore everything until it finds another set of three apostrophes. See, I noticed um, by default when you use Eclipse, it actually automatically inserts your name in there as an offer. Um, as a comment? Yeah, it, it puts yeah. it as a comment automatically. Yeah. Yes. So the three apostrophes will work in interchangeably with the uh, pound sign? Yeah. this topic, which is in Cougar View already, so um, if you don't manage to copy the homework, um, it's in Cougar View. This is to be done before Thursday's class. Okay. Okay. You should read all of chapter two. Okay. You've been reading it already. And read the beginning of chapter three, sections 3.1, 3.2. Um, and it's always encouraged that you have one question. Um, for in my programming lab, mm -hmm. um, section 2.9 and 2.10 is not titled numerical data types and operators. That's section 2.8. Okay. So mm -hmm. are we 2.9, uh, 2.10 and dismiss the title? Okay. I will look into that and okay. I will update this okay. to review. I'll probably post it as a news so you can get to um, mm -hmm. know about it. I'll check. Maybe I did a typo. So in programming lab, we have to do a, a section before Thursday, a part, or just read um, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the deadline I put was Friday. Yeah. Right. We're only paying attention to the homework slide that has our class dates on, right? Hmm? Yeah, there's a slide before this that there's has last semester's dates on it. Is that, I just want to make sure that that's not like our uh, If you go back a slide. Yeah. Yeah, that has last semester's. That's not us, right? Yeah. That's right. But that's, you have the correct dates with the previous okay. slide, right? Yeah. Um, that slide has 2.8, no, the one you were just looking at from last semester, that has the 2.8. 2.8 numerical data types and operators. I don't know where I got that from. So this should really be 2.8. I have to correct that in Google View. So all the homework will be in the drop boxes, or not, I mean not drop boxes. No, the homework will be different types of homework, so it will depend on what type. 
If it's an assignment, yeah. Uh, it's a major assignment, like the first assignment, you submit it in the Dropbox. Otherwise, you may, be able, you may be doing it in my programming lab, or it may just be some reading assignment. And those will usually be listed where, usually? Uh, usually the last slide in the day's lecture I have uh, describing um, the, home the homework okay. to be done before the following class. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. How am I going to show the program lab? Am I downloading? What am I doing to show that I've completed program lab? Uh, you don't have to, because I I can always go in. I can always go in and see what everybody has done uh. with my programming lab. So it's automatically saved. Um, so you don't have to submit or do anything. Um, Uh, I think that had a separate date. But if you miss the deadline, you should still try to do it. Okay? Don't don't say, well, the deadline is gone, so I shouldn't be looking at it. Do it, because it's regarded as late, but it's better than not doing it at all. It may help you later on. Doesn't matter, as long as you, as long as you get it uh, right. Yeah, doesn't matter how many times attempts it takes. Okay, so that was the last slide. Let's go back to the beginning. Have you done any graphics? Uh, graphics programming? No. Okay. Um, all right. Let's look at some graphics programming. Now what I'm about to do is open a file which already has a program in it. And this program is one of those programs that came with the textbook. And you have access to all the code, in fact. You can download it from Cougar View, mm -hmm. or you can go to the publisher's site and download it yourself. But I've already downloaded it and uploaded it back to Cougar View. Wow. Let me show you where to find it. So you don't have to type all the code if you want to just try them. Um, let me change view to student view. Under resources, uh, I've added a few videos, so you may like to watch them. Like what is computer memory? More on computer types and memory. Two videos I added this weekend, just this past weekend. Um, textbook resources, <coughs> textbook Python code. That's a zip file. So no. when you go home, just download it unzip it and you'll have it all in one folder for you to try. All the textbook PowerPoints, which are pretty much what we are looking at. So I use mostly the PowerPoints that came with the book and I make changes here and there, maybe add a few things. So, But it's, if you want to look at the original PowerPoints, they're also there. And there's a list of errors in the textbook. If you find something that seems not quite making sense to you, then check this error list to see if there is a typo. And let me know if you find any. 
I mean, they make they make mistakes in the textbook. Yeah, uh, typing errors, uh, word processing errors. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's go back to idle and open up one of those files, uh, the one of those programs in a file that creates <coughs> the graphics for the Olympic ring. The folder, once you unzip it, will be called PyBook. PyBook? PyBook for Python code from the book, I guess. Mm -hmm. And in there, you will find all these files with .py extension. Okay. .py means these are all Python programs. Okay. Olympic ring, Olympic symbol. Okay. Open that. Here it is. I have two windows. This window is the Python shell. You see the title, shell? Okay. Um, if you want to type a new program, you should always go to the file menu and select new file. And then type in your, your code, okay? Into that file. And once you are done, you should then go into file and select save as and then save that. It will actually force you to do that before you are able to run. If you click on run, it will say source must be saved. Is that a okay, that's, so a fa that's a fail safe, I guess, right? Hmm? That's a fail safe that it does that so that it doesn't? Yeah, so that you run it and then you forget to save it before you quit and then you've lost your program. So it always forces you to save before you run it. So it runs in the shell, so we have to open up a new file every time, type in there, and then it runs in the shell? Uh, actually, you can run from that window itself. That's what you'll do. And we are going to do that, exactly that now. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go to the other window, which has the table program. Okay, and we click run. So we are actually not in the shell. But usually <coughs> the results will be shown in the shell. Okay, so um, if I create a new file, uh, just to test it, and then I try to run, it says, well, run module, it says save. I said, okay, save. And then it'll ask me where to save. And let me say I'm saving it on the desktop. Okay, and I call it hello. Um, and I say save. It saved it. And um, where is the shell? There you go. It's so I, I ran the program from there. But the output was displayed in the shell. Okay, any inputs will also be expected to be typed into the shell. Okay, so now um, back to that program. If we run it, because this is graphics. The output does not go to the shell window. Instead, it creates a new graphics window. Okay. So now we have three windows. We have the shell from where we use the file menu to open the program. And then we have the program window that we just opened. And then when we ran, we um, it created the graphics window yes, to show us the output. So what exactly is Turtle? Okay, Turtle is the name of a library of functions, collection of functions, and that comes with Python or yeah. So 
the code for writing all those colorful rings, they were already given in the turtle module. In fact, module is the word, the name used in Python jargon. Uh, but the generic name is a library of functions. This is like a collection. Uh, there's another word, package, which is used in Java. Mm -hmm. uh, but module is what we say in Python. So turtle is a module. And see this import command? That imported the functions from the, Python, uh, from the turtle module so that we can use them. And all these, like color, pen up, go to, these are all names of functions for doing various things. For example, uh, color changes the color to blue. Mm. Color blue, you could have said color red. And ha ha in fact, see later on, when we before we draw the the black ring, that's the code for drawing the black ring. We change the color to black, yeah. and then in the last statement, we drew a circle with radius 45. So what's going on in the middle? Let me explain the turtle a little bit, because you will be writing quite a few programs with turtle. And the turtle is nice. Uh, you'll enjoy using it, I'm sure. So Turtle um, was actually, um, Turtle Graphics was actually written for, um, to, to teach programming to kids in a fun way, hmm. okay? So um, don't feel um, embarrassed because as far as we are concerned right now, we are just like those kids, just taking our first steps into programming. So um, the idea is, there is this turtle out there. You can have multiple turtles if you want to. And they walk around the screen. They crawl around the screen. And they carry, They each of them carries a pen with a certain color. And um, it, it, when the turtle walks, you can make the turtle move from one point to another. And when you move it, it drags the pen behind it, and as a result, it leaves a trace, draws a line. Okay? And so if you just want to move the turtle from point A to point B, um, you have um, the, um, you can say go to and give the coordinates of point B, it will go to point B. Okay? But it will also draw a line as it goes from A to B. So if you don't want a line drawn, then you um, will tell the turtle to lift the pen using the pen up function. When you want to draw the line, you let the pen down. Tell the turtle to lower the pen. So that's the pen down. So before we drew, see these are the steps which are executed in that order, okay? So let's look at the first one, very first line. Um, So the first line is importing the the functions. These functions like color, pen up, go to. These functions belong, they belong. to the turtle module. Uh -huh. okay? So the module is imported. That means we have all these functions. We can call these functions now. Okay. Okay. And uh, to call a function to do something with a turtle, you have to give the name of the turtle and then the name of the function. The so name by default. The turtle is called turtle. Okay. All right. So you want to change the color of the turtle? You say turtle dot color, and then give the color. Ah. Okay. 
And then, before you want to travel to move to this new location, and the location is given in terms of the x and y coordinates. In case you haven't guessed it already, this is the x coordinate, that's the y coordinate on the screen. Okay. Right? And before you give the go to command, you want the pen to be lifted up so that it doesn't leave a trace, doesn't draw a line. So that's why we have pen. And then once the turtle is there, so after yeah. the third line has been executed, the turtle is at point B, which is um, what happened? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so turtle after executing the third line, the turtle is at say minus 110, minus 25. That's the location. And at this location, you want to draw the blue circle. So you tell the turtle to lower the pen. Mm -hmm. So that's the pen down command, the fourth line, pen down. And then it executes the command turtle dot circle, which draws the circle like this at that point. So if you just type in turtle dot circle, it automatically will? Yeah, it will draw a circle. Ah. Yeah, yes and no. Um, there are only a limited uh, amount of graphic shapes that you can draw. You can draw lines, you can draw circles, um, you cannot draw a rectangle or a box. You have to just draw four lines at the right positions to create a box. But there are more powerful graphics packages and we will also use that, which has lots of ready-made objects, like the circle, which is ready-made, um, that you can draw. Yes? Uh, is there anything you can input over the pen up or pen down functions? Yeah, you can input, say, you can input the radius of the circle and then give the turtle dot circle command with that radius that you input. Uh -huh. So as a user, you can actually change the radius of the circle being drawn. Oh, you can't. Oh. oh, okay. Down and up function. Can you do that? Yeah, but what would you want to do with pen up and pen down? Pen up, pen down doesn't take any values. As you can see, um, the, the pair of empty parentheses they tell us that pen up or pen down, these are all color circles, these are functions. So you know it's a function by looking at the pair of parentheses. Oh, you know it's a function when you look at the pair, okay. Yeah. The space that it is like, it's like an X and Y graph, so it's the uh, zero, zero. Uh, Initially it's at zero, zero. Okay. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's take a look at that in the remaining minute. You can actually control the size of this window too. But this is zero, zero. So this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. Just like we learned at school. Okay. So if this is zero, zero and um, your window, let's say the window is 400 by 400, suppose. Then your, what will be the range of x values from here to here? This is 400. Negative something? Negative 100? Yeah, uh, so negative 200 maybe? Positive 200? And similarly, this will be negative 200y to positive 200y. Okay. Okay, so you will most likely be doing some 
that graphics in the lab. Um, and of course, we will look at more programs, and in, in that process, we will get a better understanding of how programs work, how we write programs. Yes. Yeah. All right. You Thank you. Mm -hmm. so you take care. I'll see you on Thursday. See you Thursday. Okay. And look out for the assignment.